What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, the Blu-ray Bandit, back once again with another pawn shop haul video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for your best shot at a free digital code. Let's see what I can find. Welcome back. I hit three pawn shops. This is the first. Let's see what I got. This was a Cash America. I spent $14.90 on eight titles, which brings them to $1.86 each. Alien vs. Predator, double feature. This includes Aliens vs. Predator and Aliens vs. Predator Requiem, and two versions of each film, the theatrical and the unrated version. I don't like these movies, and I sincerely doubt the unrated versions will change my opinion. I don't plan on rewatching this. I don't even plan on keeping it. I bought it for the express purpose of reselling it on eBay to help pay for titles that I'd rather keep. This one scanned at $7. I'll easily triple my money headed to eBay. Logan. This is a title that I already own on 4K. I've sold this Blu-ray before, both with and without slipcover. This one obviously without but it's a reliable seller either way oh. with digital code. Yeah, Logan is a reliable seller and also happens to be a good movie. It's probably my favorite Wolverine movie, maybe even my favorite X-Men movie. Oh, and it comes with the black and white Logan Noir edition. Have my others also come with that and I just didn't notice? I don't remember. This one scanned at $11. It'll probably sell at that, maybe a dollar less. But again, it's a reliable seller. I bought it to help pay for some of the titles that I plan on keeping. Black Swan. This is a movie I love. I bought it because I thought it was new, but I didn't really look at the stickers. Evidently, this is an old movie stop used movie that they re-shrink wrapped. So it is a used copy. And if you look close, it might actually have some water damage right here. I don't know. I can't tell if that's just the wrapper on the outside or what. I already own this on Blu-ray. It scanned at about $5. So I will be reselling this copy. It scanned a lot higher new. So I was hoping to make a little more on it, but in retrospect, it's definitely used. I'm gonna remove the shrink wrap and sell it as used. And hopefully this gross yellow film is just on the plastic and not the actual insert, but we'll see. A great movie. It's awesome. Check it out. Straight out of Compton, another reliable eBay sale. I already own this on Blu-ray. It's scanned at six or seven dollars if memory serves. Yeah, it's a fun movie, kind of a biopic of the rap group NWA, but it doesn't take itself too seriously, I wouldn't say. I mean, it is a biopic. It's showing you roughly what happened, but it's not too deadly serious about anything. This is the unrated director's cut. So is my version. I already own this on Blu-ray. Still haven't watched it, but I'm looking forward to someday experiencing the unrated director's cut. Pirates of the Caribbean, the first three films. So those first four titles were titles that I bought for the express purpose of reselling. These three I'm going to keep. And I've kind of been on the hunt for for a while. I come across Pirates of the Caribbean often at pawn shops, but I wanted to kind of buy all of them all in one shot. I recently picked up the last film, the fourth in 4K, and then shortly after, I saw these three on the shelf. If you watched my last mail call, you know that the third movie, I recently got in a trade with one of my subscribers. So I didn't really need the third, but if I'm going to have all three, I'd rather have the slim versions with the matching spines. I'm going to sell the copy that I got for my subscriber and keep these three on my shelf. Next pawn shop was a value pawn. I spent $9.99 out the door, including tax. I bought four titles, which brings each title to roughly $2.50 each. Own the Moments, Date Night and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. This is a two-pack collection. I'm not quite sure what these have to do with anything other than maybe they are romantic comedies that also have action in them. I don't know. I don't know why these two were paired together, but they were. They don't share a director. They don't share actors. It's a strange one. Regardless, 
I enjoy both of these movies, probably Mr. and Mrs. Smith more than Date Night, which I've only seen once. Is Date Night also a relationship movie based on spies? I don't remember enough about Date Night. Maybe that's the common thread between these two. I really don't remember. I obviously need to rewatch Date Night. But yeah, I already own Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I'll be selling my Blu-ray copy to help pay for this one, which will add a title to my collection and do it in a space-saving way. Angels and Demons, starring Tom Hanks, directed by Ron Howard, with Slipcover. This is the second film in the Da Vinci Code franchise. Oddly enough, I think it's based on the first book in the franchise. They kind of made them out of order because Angels and Demons, while a good read, wasn't quite as successfully commercial as the phenomenon that the Da Vinci Code was. So they made that movie first, and then they kind of made Angels and Demons a sequel. I don't know. It got kind of weird there for a moment. I saw this movie in a movie theater, but I don't remember anything about it. I read the book. I remember far more about what was in the book. I'm sure the movie reflects that on some level, but uh, I also don't love these movies. I liked the books quite a bit. The movies are okay, but I have also only seen them once. So I figured while I'm out and about, I would just pick them up one by one. And then once I had them all, I'd rewatch them. I haven't actually seen Inferno, which is the third and final one, but I've definitely seen the, the Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons. I now have Angels and Demons and Inferno. I just need to find Da Vinci Code and then I'll give them a rewatch and maybe keep them or maybe resell them. I don't know. I do like the idea of having every Ron Howard film. Ron Howard, who has a couple of great movies in his filmography and a couple of not great movies in his filmography. The only reason I would collect every Ron Howard film is kind of as a little bit of a troll. Like, who collects every Ron Howard film? Who cares? Just get the good ones and leave the rest. I don't know. I think it would kind of be funny, and most of them are available for not much money. I just think it'd be great to have a collection on a shelf where you're like, here's my collection of all my Spielberg movies. Here's my collection of every Tarantino movie. And here's my collection of every Ron Howard movie. Can you imagine the looks you'd get? In order to get there, I gotta have Angels and Demons. And now I do. Kong Skull Island. Pretty much the only King Kong movie made in the modern filmmaking era that I enjoy. This movie is so wacky. It's kind of like the worst shallow version of Apocalypse Now mixed with a King Kong movie mixed with a superhero film. I don't know. I don't know what the mixture is, but it's a weird one, but I enjoy it. I have only seen it once. I'm anxious to rewatch it. Not sure if I'll add it to the collection forever. It's scanned at $7. So if I wanted to resell it, I'll easily make my money back and then some. Undecided on Kong Skull Island. Alien Covenant with Slipcover. This is the last Alien film that's good that I did not own. I have Alien 1, 2, 3, and 4 on Blu-ray, as well as Prometheus, and now Alien Covenant. Those are pretty much the only Alien films that are worth anything. This movie didn't get much play in theaters, but I enjoyed it. It's very weird. If you didn't like Prometheus, you probably won't like this either. But I did, which is kind of a bummer because it, it kind of bombed. Like I have to admit, it kind of bombed. Nobody went and saw it. I did in, in theaters, and I enjoyed it. It has a weird, dark, melancholy tone to it. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Possibly it's just Michael Fassbender's weird performance in the movie. I don't know. What I do know is it sucks that we're probably not going to get a third reboot Alien movie. You know, we got Prometheus. We got Covenant. There should be a third movie to really tie off the series, but I doubt we will get that because this one did not do very well. But I'm excited to have it. And I'm adding it to my Alien collection. One more pawn shop. There's only one title in here. Let's see what it is. All right, no receipt for this one, but I can tell you I paid $2.34 for this. And the title is Cadillac Man, starring Robin Williams and Tim Robbins. Sorry if you were expecting something amazing, but no, it's Cadillac Man. Pretty much a forgotten comedy from the 80s. I walked into this dingy, disgusting pawn shop that I'd never been into before. This is typically not the kind of pawn shop that has Blu-rays. They might have DVDs that have been in there for a decade. This is the kind of pawn shop that does most of its business in lawnmowers and guns. But I walked in anyway. I asked him if they had any Blu-rays. He pointed to a stack of four Blu-rays and said, yeah, right there. 
and this one was sitting on top. I've never actually seen this movie, but I knew I had to get it when I looked at the spine and I saw that it's a Kino Lorber title. If you know anything about boutique Blu-rays, Kino Lorber is a boutique Blu-ray company. So I knew this one had value. I asked him how much. He said $2. Somehow it rang up to $2.43, which is more than what the tax rate is. I don't exactly know what was going on there, but without scanning it, I walked out with it for that price. Once I got into the car, I gave it a little scan, and it regularly sells for about $13. As I mentioned, I've never seen this movie before, so I'm interested to give it a watch. I'm definitely also going to have to give it a bath. It was the Blu-ray on the top of the stack of four, and it just has this gross film on the top. It's not quite dust because you can't blow it off, but it's something. I don't know if I'm just going to completely replace the case or what. I checked out the insert. It's still pure white, but it kind of looks yellow here just because of just how caked whatever this is on top of the case itself. Sometimes buying Blu-rays at Pawn Shop is a dirty business. But this one, I had no hopes that this Pawn Shop would have any Blu-rays, and I walked out with potentially a keeper, and if not, a good flip on eBay to help pay for the titles I'm going to keep. Whether this one will add to the collection, still up in the air. All right, 14 titles, total of $27.23, average per title price of $1.94 each, total estimated value for this pawn shop haul, $75. Not all treasure is silver and gold, mate. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Until then, bye.